Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Tiny. I'm a software engineer at Modal AI, and today I'm going to be talking about VIO tracking and benchmarking. So to start, what is VIO? VIO stands for Visual Inertial Odometry, and it is a technique that we use to estimate drone position and orientation by combining camera and IMU data. Camera and IMU data is used as input to VIO algorithms, which then output a pose or position orientation and velocity estimation. One important thing to note is that when we talk about camera data, what we really mean is feature data. So what is feature data? Feature data is distinct visual points within an image, usually corners, or areas with sharp changes in brightness. So on the left image, the red dots on the corners of the chessboard are identified as features, and on the right image, the blue dots on the dog have been identified as feature points. Camera data contains features which we can track from frame to frame. So in frame zero, we see the car is on the right side with the red squares being our features, and then in frame one, the car moves to the left and the features move left with the car. So what we can do is track features from frame to frame, look at how those features move and combine that with our IMU data. And when we combine those two and input them into the VIO algorithm, we can know how the camera or the drone is moving from frame to frame. So camera data gets us feature data, and feature data is simply an XY coordinate within the image and an ID to identify that feature amongst all the other ones. So how is VIO done on Voxel? We start with our VIO pipeline, and the VIO algorithm that we use is an open source software called OpenVINs, which lives in our own fork, Voxel OpenVINs. IMU data comes from Voxel IMU server, and feature data is generated within OpenVINs. We feed camera data, which comes from Voxel camera server, to OpenVINs, and Voxel OpenVINs lives inside of Voxel OpenVINs server, which is a wrapper that does setup, takeoff logic, and failure detection. And finally, our pose is output to a Linux pipe that contains position, orientation, and velocity information, as well as some other state data. One thing to note about the input tracking images is that the default camera images look like this, but we apply a normalization when they are used for detection and tracking because this brightens the corners of the image and generally helps the algorithms perform. The two main steps of working with feature data are detection and tracking. Detection starts with an input image and we run a detection algorithm that identifies features. So in this image, we run our detection algorithm. In this uh, example, we use FAST9 across a five by five grid and different grids have different colors, but you can see that they appear around corners or where there are sharp changes in contrast. The next step is tracking. So once we have identified features, we want to see how they move from frame to frame. And we do that using a technique called optical flow, which lets us know how pixels in one frame move to the next. By looking at how the brightness of pixels in the area around a feature change from frame A to frame B. We do this by calculating a brightness gradient which measures changes in horizontal and vertical directions. We then use the changes in the brightness along the X and Y axis to calculate how a point moves. Optical flow can be improved with coarse to fine refinement where we take the original image and create an image pyramid where each level has the original resolution scaled down by a factor of two. We start on the smallest level where things are the simplest and large motion is the easiest to track. 
and work our way to higher resolutions, repeating the same steps to capture the finer motion, which greatly increases the accuracy of our feature tracking. The output of optical flow is an estimation for how a specific point moved from one frame to the next. So here we see a tree, and on the next image, the tree moves down and to the left, and that movement is reflected in the optical flow vectors seen on the right. So the tree moves down and left and the arrows point down and left. So when we combine detection and tracking, this is what it looks like in real time. When points that are tracked move off of the screen, new points get detected and are tracked for as long as possible. Now, doing detection and tracking for each camera frame at 30 times a second for two camera streams can be pretty computationally expensive. In our original implementation, functions ran primarily on the CPU and image memory was copied, which meant high CPU utilization. But in our newer implementation, functions are offloaded to the GPU, image memory is not copied, which results in significantly lower CPU usage, which frees up processing power to do other things. Now once feature tracking, features are tracking and IMU data is coming in, VIO is happy and will output position and velocity estimates, but we wanna know how accurate and robust these estimates are or in other words, how do we assess VIO? We do that by benchmarking, which consists of recording a flight log and then replaying the flight log offline while VIO is running, and then collecting that replay data and comparing it to an expected outcome or a ground truth. To do that, we've built a tool in Portal to visualize VIO benchmark data, which lets you replay uh, VIO data and then load that replay into Portal, where you can see XYZ position data as well as quality quality and feature count metrics on the bottom there. And on the right, you can see the features that were being used within OpenVINs to update the state of the drone from frame to frame. So that concludes the presentation. Thank you for your time.